This is going to be a very quick video just over how we drive inverse trig functions because you're going to have a quiz where you're going to have a set of questions like that. So here are three examples that are pretty comparable and as far as the technique and the difficulty. So all the directions will say is to derive. When we go through these, all of my derivatives are going to have du in the numerator, so that's one thing you want to think about. The other thing to keep in mind with the signs, the pluses and minuses, if it is a co-function, it will be negative. Essentially, arc sine and arc cosine are opposites, arc tangent and arc cotangent are opposites, and arc secant and arc cosecant are opposites. So the first one, we need to derive the e to the 4x. That will give you 4e to the 4x. The 3 you can either keep out front, you can multiply it by what you get on the top. So we would have 4e to the 4x. So if you want, you could say 12e to the 4x. Over the bottom, in sine, it is the square root of 1 minus u squared. So you have to correctly square e to the 4x. When I square e to the 4x, I get e to the 8x. So you can either leave your answer like this, or you can multiply the 2 or the 3 on top to give you 12 e to the 4x over the square root of 1 minus e to the 8x. The next one is a cosine, so the first thing you should think is this is going to be a negative. It really helps you write that negative down right away, put it either out front or on top of your uh, fraction. In the numerator, we need the derivative of the cube root of x. So you want to think about x is the cube root of x is being x to the 1 third. So power out front, power 1 less. The derivative is 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. So that's going to go up here. On the bottom, it is the square root of 1 minus u squared. So just like it was with sine, only it's negative out front. So we need to square x to the 1 third. When I square x to the 1 third, I multiply powers, I get x to the 2 thirds. You can either leave your answer like this, or you can make both denominators be together. So bring this down. So another option for your answer is to write it as negative 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds times radical 1 minus x to the 2 thirds. That's what you would see if it was a multiple choice setting. That would probably be the answer that they would leave as their final answer. And then the last one is an arc secant. It is positive because it's not one of the cofunctions. In your numerator, you will have the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. In the denominator, you're going to have the original u in absolute values, so 3x squared. And then in the square root, you have u squared minus 1. So when I square 3x squared, I get 9x to the fourth minus 1. You can leave your answer like that. You could reduce fractions. You are allowed to reduce the 6 over 3, because keep in mind, when you have that absolute value of 3, it's just 3. And actually, in this problem, those absolute value bars are completely unnecessary, because 3x squared will always be positive, because x squared is always positive. So you could leave it like this. You could go even further and reduce this. You could even reduce your x and your x squared. So if you really want to get a very simplified answer, you could write it as 2 over x times the square root of 9x to the fourth minus 1. And again, in a short answer exercise, it doesn't matter how much you simplify. On a multiple choice, you want to look and see, can I go further to try to get your answer to match up to what's there? That's a quick derivative review. The only thing that wasn't covered in this video is making sure you knew how, know how to derive arc tangent. Arc tangent is always positive, and it is du over 1 plus u squared. Arc tangent and cotangent are the only inverse trig functions that do not include a radical.